Welcome to Toffee TV. Everton have confirmed Amadou Onana signing uh, from Lille. Lille eventually remembered that you have to send part of the agreement back, the last part of the agreement. Uh, and it's come through and he is now an Everton player, which is uh, which is very good. A lot of people are excited. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see him. Yeah, I, was, I obviously saw him at the match on Saturday and it's sat in the main stand, which was nice to see. Obviously, Lampard spoke about him, spoke highly of him. Um, starting to get a bit worried how, how they announced him two days later, but it's all done now and, and it's it's good that he's here. It's the right signing, in my opinion. It's good. It's what I've been crying out for. Had some energy in midfield. He's, he's six foot five and he's rapid. You know, really good defensively. He gets around the pitch. He's good going forward, good on the ball. 22 years of age, the perfect age. 20, but yeah. Oh, 20. But yeah, early 20. So, no, it's it re- really, really good signing. No, he is. It's good. It's a good sign. And obviously, got in and snaffled him from West Ham. From West Ham's grasp. Everton been chasing them all summer um, and letting it play out. And, um, yeah, as a result of that, they've got their man following on from Connor Cody yesterday. Um, so, you know, and obviously a lot of people wondering when Garner will be the next one in or whether he'll be the next one in Everton, in my opinion, still desperate to uh, desperate for a forward. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to see what, you know, how he's... I'm not saying, like, Owen Anna and Garner have got the right to just walk into the team because they have to obviously work for it, but, you know, with the likes of Conor Cody coming in, who's more suited to a back, you know, a back five... Be really interesting to see how I will I will play going forward because I think as a as a two as a partnership Tarkowski and Cody could be really good. Obviously not got that pace, you need that recovery place to to allow you to go a bit higher at the pitch. But if you got like players like Onana and Garner in front of them, but I don't know which one would sit. Um, I both can do the job and both can do the job. You know, in in, in a you know a bit higher at the pitch as well. It'd be really interesting how interesting to see how we'll play. Mm, yeah, I I totally agree. I totally agree. Pedder's entered the building. And he's off camera but his coffee's here so are we making a sub or are you staying on you can do your coffee's over here it's the oh, sub I'll jump on Ned right, you haven't even high fived him as he's coming on come on mate oh, come Shawn on Michaels. <laughs> it's not a sub is it wrestling yeah yeah. sorry I was late because I was sorting out yeah, banana no, no, stuff it's a child, it's a child. and it delayed me dog walk it just knocked course. everything on one that's what happens right you know um Everton second signing in about hours. fifteen hours or something. Hours confirmed. Um, this is a this is obviously one that people are getting just a touch nervy about yesterday when it's dragging on. But messages of people asking if the fax machine was broken or can yeah. But it's done, isn't it? It's done, and yeah. Everton have announced it. So, are you pleased with this one on paper? Obviously, no, I'm actually pleased with it in real life. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just on paper. On grass as well. Um, no, it's a he's a good he's a, a good. Everything about the deal is good mm. for Everton. The 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 way they've the way they got they snatched it off West Ham, brilliant. The way the media played it out, as in like he was going to West Ham and then suddenly he was going to Everton. It was like I only want to play for Everton, brilliant. Yeah. Um. The but just 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 the just the 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 kind of player he is, yeah, the age, profile, yeah. the, the you know the how you know the length of the contract. Um, all that kind of thing is really, really good, and I think as a player, he looks like a very confident player, very confident in his own ability. Mm. He's got those long legs; can get, you know, the ta- loves loves a tackle, mm. um, but also loves a little trick as well. Yeah. Loves, loves just knocking it past the player and getting around the other side. Loves spinning on the ball out of situations. Doesn't look like someone who gets who um, gets too flustered under um, yeah, a couple of challenges. Ball, yeah. Um, okay, final third. Maybe that's not his domain, but who knows? Maybe, maybe that's something he can grow into. Maybe with a, maybe with a bit more confidence, bit, a bit more, you know, experience. We'll, we might see a little bit more, more of that. Mm. But I think the difference with a play like him, and I'm listening. By the way, I'm not talking like straight away. This lad's going to take a little bit of time to bed in, and let's make sure we give him that time. But I think the difference is, is we're on Saturday. You had the core. Eh? More, and I'm not saying Decorey didn't have a good game, but more or less on sat- Saturday he was just chasing the ball around. Mm. Whereas I think this this is the kind of lad who can nick the ball and then get us going on the front foot. He's the he's the kind of lad who can run ten yards with the ball and 
it'd be like that. Mm-hmm. So he can get us up the pitch as well. And I think that's the difference. With, I'm not saying you know, he's going to come in and the core is going to go out. I'm just, if you look at the style of player compared to what we've got from the team, mm-hmm. you know, the, he, he's the type of player who will who will come in, win the ball, and then break forward with it. I don't think necessarily the core is got that in his legs anymore to be able to do that he's more you know, he can win the ball and then he's he's more just looking for that first pass straight mm-hmm. away I think this lad will get you up the pitch so uh, it's a, it's exciting all, all all round and it shows that hopefully things are starting to change in Evan I complained daily in the summer about about when we were being linked with Harry Winks and, and why we were looking <laughs> at those kind of players and to be fair in the space of a couple of months, things have turned around a little bit, and we're, t- we're looking at we're looking at other kind of players. So mm. um, that that's that's good. It it feels like there has been a sea change at the at mm. the football club, and hopefully that's w- that's more of what we w- will get going forward now. Um, yeah, these kind of you know again you will get people go. Well, you've got to get him before he goes to Lille now. Yeah, you've, and and that's right. That's you know true, what? Yeah. That's right. You've got yeah. to you've got to you've got to do what because literally that's what Brighton do, isn't it? And mm. uh, and you know we've spoken months for months about Brighton. I think we're both quite big admirers about mm. how they do their work. You know the kid on Saturday. Um, <laughs> Can I see we could have had him for five million yeah, quid. Yeah. We could have. But there was no plan for him at all, and everyone like, well, we're well stocked in there. Mm. Brighton went and got him for five million, sent him on loan. Sold the other kid for thirty million, brought him into the side, and he hey, looks like a. And that's what you've got to do. That's what a club. That's what a club like Everton have got to start doing. So this is this is great that Everton are starting to look there. Let's start looking a bit earlier, a bit earlier now, and seeing the the rough gems. And if you have to send them on loan, do we have confidence in what you want to do? So I think both signings have been really good. Let's be honest. And Connor Cody, one the enthusiasm from him in that interview was unbelievable. We'll get on. We'll get on to Connor Cody in a minute because I think I, I totally agree. Actually, if you can get excited by an interview, I actually got excited by it, and I never thought I would be sat here saying that about Ned was so excited Connor by Cody. it. He went to Ashton for a bevy. That was it. That was it. thought about getting a skin in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, the, the old man, I, th- I think the thing is, did say early on that maybe we didn't. I, I did say this, I was at pain to say this, we didn't see the whole plan, and it's easy to link Everton with footballers, isn't it? We, we seen it wink, and it was this, and it was that. And that, what I like about this deal. Is that Everton been tracking them for a while mm. and just hung in there until the, the dirty work had been done by West Ham nearly, the, the back and forth with Lille till he got to a place where Lille thought, yeah, we will actually consider selling them. Because yeah. at first he told he wasn't for sale. Everton had sold that in May, end of May, once you know, can Kevin tell well and the team had him well on their radar and he was told right at the end of May he wasn't for sale. West Ham had obviously kept going in and in and in, and Everton have, have done really well for it. But you're right, it, it is a case of what you want to see going forward is the likes of him, but when he left Hamburg to go to, to Lille, we, we need to be picking those deals up as well. And he, you get him in, you look at the attributes and you go, right, he's big, he's strong, he can get about the pitch. How can we mould him now to be our player? Because he's not. We can't take him at nineteen and go. You're in our first team. Not with everyone. Some some are ready and some aren't. And this kid, Lille put him in and and, and uh, add him in and out. And even though we made forty one appearances last season, a lot of them were off the bench. Yeah. Everton need to do that. Uh, or or like you said, go right. Well, what we're doing is there's a short term loan for this fella, and that short term loan is going to be from August to January or or January to May. We're going to train with him all through that period, see how he is. And if he's not where we need him to be, then we'll put him on loan for the last five months of the season somewhere or whatever and do that. And, and then you can start. Everton need to get to a place where they can spend five million on someone who doesn't need to go in the team right now. Yeah. And that's where Everton bollocks it up. Yeah, they yeah. started spending 40s when they should have gone, no, we'll spend 25 and we'll spend five. They kind of done it with the likes of Vlasic and Luckman and what Everton really should have probably done with them was say, like, we have got a plan for them. Vlasic is one of them. He's like, West Ham on sending them on loan because he just can't do in the Premier League. But but get them but on the, loan and develop. Henry Vla- on your core. Vlasic might be able to do it in the Premier League is because we balls up his development. Maybe. But West Ham have had a goal. No, I know, but, no you know, but they've done it after us. Maybe what we should have done with Vlasic is bought him for 10 million quid and said, stay here for a year. And had, and yeah. had you, yeah. And say, so stay free. Carry on developing. Carry on developing. Yeah, yeah. We don't need you right now. We've got already got three number tens. Thirty-seven number yeah. tens. Yeah. And that's 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 the other side of it. You might you might see those players and go, oh, fancy. I like the look of him, but you know what? Maybe you know you you sometimes it is that about that. It is, that's why it's good development. 
You get it wrong. Of course, yeah. It's very hard to get back. Yeah. And you know, and so it's also how you how oh, you. What's mad though, right? We took the we we paid like three million quid for Dennis Adonair, and we took Josh Bowler for three yeah. and a half million quid, and we took. Boris Matters for like a million. And stuck like, to me in the 21s. In the 21s, he's never developed. And now you go, well, where's that money? Where is he? You could have gone. Listen, that's, by the way, you could have gone and got Jared Bowen and all that. But but this is why we've always been, this is where we've been big advocates of having, having a team ab- abroad. Either mm, we own yeah, one or we're linked yeah. into one, you know, whatever. Yeah. But sure he's got enough money that he could own a football club somewhere else mm. and use it as a development tool. Yeah. yeah. Because that's, you know, look at, look at, look at, Again, look at Leipzig. Leipzig. They've just bought a player from Salzburg. They've mm. used the the Red Bull formula yeah, again, course, and yeah, and yeah. you know that's. I don't know how many times you've got to add that there, but that's what it, that's the way it is. But you've it? either got to have, you've either got to have between the clubs. By the way, you've either got to have a club that you work with abroad, mm. or you go and get one yourself. Yeah. Now the easiest thing to do would be to have one that you work with and then send players out on loan. And Hi, Marcel. But that's, well, I mean, I don't know with PSV because they They're are quite big a big club, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But but there's well, no reason why others, yeah. there wouldn't be someone else in Holland or someone in Belgium mm. where you go, we'd like to work with you, Let's we'd like to set up, up a, an unofficial yeah, link. And But you want those, as well as that, you want something coming the other way. So you want the, the club that you look, you t- having the set up with. Because really, you want first dibs on a few there, of their yeah. players as well as developing your place. So it's got to be, for me, it's got to Yeah, but if you do that correctly, though, but if you do that correctly... You can work it so that they you put money into their into their um academy, mm. make their academy set Strong, up really yeah. good, facilities mm. really good. Mm. So you can start because Holland and Belgium are small countries. Yeah, yeah. If you can start and I, and be and I don't Produce know fantastic I don't know what their it? rules are, by the way, mm. in terms of but, like players but they, yeah, where the didn't he? That was a Chalwa. No, what I mean is Leicester I don't I don't know what the rules are in terms of the, how far away from their club can you bring players in? Do you yeah, know, like yeah, Arsenal yeah. abandoned it, didn't he? Yeah. Where it used to be ninety miles, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Which is one of the, a terrible t- should never. Have, well, of course, why would you do do it for all the top clubs? So I don't know. But but if you go to a club and you say, right, we're going to build you brilliant facilities, so you're going to be able to attract all the best young players in the mm. area or outside the area, and then but we've got first dibs on them. That's that's what we should be doing as a football club because. What is what is very noticeable, and actually, do you know what's funny? I've noticed this about. Um, we've had this conversation before, but I've noticed this about all sport. Liverpool as a city is not making any athletes. It's not making any footballers. It's not making any actual athletes. There's there's very but why I don't know, but but if you look at it right, sport there's it's very few sports off. people coming out of Liverpool at the moment, and I don't understand why that is. But the other side of that is Everton are losing players left, right, and centre now to Liverpool, Manchester United, and Manchester City mm. because they've broke the catchment area up. Yeah, yeah. And all the ones who are below and are going to are going to places like Wigan now because they see a better career path. And Everton have got to get round that because if we're we're at, if we are attracting them, but we're losing them when they're, when they're sixteen, Everton have got to find a way round. I that. think I think that's the last one who will go. Well, you, yeah, I think but Lawrence is the last. The one problem with that though, that's, and he's gone for money. That's easy to say that, but. Manchester City's facilities are unbelievable, and if they're starting to just go Hoover up all the talent, uh, I, uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. That, no, but what I mean is though, whether it is or it isn't, mm. have a have another have oh, another plan. Oh, we've got it. We've got it. Have another we've, plan. We've got to have to make have a, sure have the have pathway. A, have a satellite station in 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 Belgium and other mm. places. You know, I know we talk up uh, how many like schools we've got in America and stuff. Is that ever going to bear fruit? Well, we don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Maybe one will come through, and that might be. What you're looking for, but Evan have got to start looking because it's getting, it's you're right. It, it might be he might be the last one, but the problem is is that kids nowadays are so savvy and their parents are just bing bing bing. Oh man, City want you. Oh my God, now. the facilities are you amazing. The they'll they'll look after you. They'll give you. And then the thing with Man City is what you can say is they might never make it at Man City, but a lot of talent is a lot of talent is being made there. Mm-hmm. And then it's they're getting good moves elsewhere. And if people look at Everton and go, well, where do Ever- where do the players go when they've been through Everton's? It's going to take time, isn't no, it? it? So, is, absolutely. So I think Everton, for just on those those situations, to work both ways, Everton needs to start looking at. But this is where this is where um, 
Kevin Nicholson come in. This is where Gareth Prosser has come in. So Everton have made those changes now. To try. Kevin Nicholson's there trying it, and he'll, he's only probably going to be at Everton for eight minutes a, before he moves on. We got there's a uh, new assistant, eight under 18 assistant came in today from Wigan. So there is there's changes being made all the time. So, so that Kevin Felwell is is right on it. To be fair, a lot of you know again got a message yesterday saying just. If you just leave this fella to do his job, he'll do a very good job. And we're seeing a little bit of evidence of that. We need to see it. Like, you're absolutely right. We need to see it on other levels. We need to see it at academy level, of course we do. Um, but just right now, when you look at Everton, you know, on Saturday, Everton had Lewis Warrington and, and Stanley Mills both on the bench mm-hmm. in the Premier League game. You know, and, and that's great. That's And we can. Whether people take value from it or not, Everton have had Reese Welsh on the bench for games. They've had Lewis Warrington being part of it, like I said, Stanley Mills has been part of it, and he looks like the kid looks like he's got a chance. Stanley Mills, I think Reese Welsh has got more than a chance. I think if Lewis Warrington's looked after, who knows, he may well have a, mm. a chance as well. He's a nice footballer. Tyler on Yango was hundred percent got a chance, although Burton are not giving him the opportunity at the moment. The first week they got bounced everywhere, and on Saturday they got a man sent off after forty-one seconds, and we're four 0 down at half time. Is he playing? Playing, eh? I don't care. Play both games. He's Plays, playing. He plays. He's learning. Seventy minutes. He's learning time. the art. Yeah, yeah. He's of course he is. Of course. Um, and so, you know that that hopefully that will bear fruit, because he quite quite frankly, um, he's the type of profile that Everton need, because this is what football's about. Now, football midfield players used to be skillful and. And you know you'd have to have a combative one in there, of course you you would. But if you had a nice touch and you could you knew your role, you can you'd be sound. Now they look they're like machines. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm hearing something. You know, when you go down the old rabbit hole on mm-hmm. YouTube, I was I was watching something, then something else, and then it went into something. Sky had done, must have done on like Thursday or something, maybe with like Carragher, Nah. Yeah, it was. A, it was Keen. like it was like the, it was like, like it. Sky have done the, their own overlap. Yeah, so that was what it was like the other day with them. They were the thing. I mean, the questions were shocking from the audience, but the the lad obviously the, the players were there. But hey, Carragher saying like Liverpool's midfield, fuck up, you know, it's, it's, a, it's aging, isn't it? It's thirty, it's not aging. good enough anymore, maybe. And so, and that you're talking about three players who waltz backwards in. No, well, it's not only aging; it's it's. But they're all aging at the same time. That's what he was saying as well. He meant the three are really good, but they're aging at the same time. He said now people like. Thiago and, and Henderson and people are picking up injuries yeah, all the time now and this, that and the other. And you're looking at Everton's midfield and you're going, you know, a Wobie, powerful, quite, I think he's, what is he, six foot is he or something? You're looking at Decore, he's like over six foot. Onana, six foot five. Onyango, six foot five. I know he's out on loan, but I'm, that's what I'm saying, that kind of profile of midfield player. And that makes it difficult, I guess, for Tom Davies, who isn't that. So he probably will be moved on. But Lewis Warrington, who's a younger version of that, 19, if we do his development right, he could be the kind of player who is a lovely little link player. He'll have to work on his body as well, I think, Lewis, to try to get a little bit stronger and a bit quicker if he can. But he's a nice footballer. Um, and it's testament to him, really, that Frank Lampard's kept him around. And, and it's great because he's never Tonian as well. And, that. and I know some people will fume now because I've just said that. But I'd love... Everton to have half a dozen Evertonians in that squad. They have to be good enough. I don't. I'm not talking tokenism. They have to be good enough. I hope Ellis Sims scores forty goals for Sunderland this season, and his development goes up. And Frank Lampard goes next summer. He's actually going to be part of our squad now because he's done it in Scotland. He's done it in League One. He's done it in the Championship. Why not try him in the Premier League as a, even as it's a third striker or whatever? So. That's the development that this squad yeah, that's what needs it is. to that's, have. That's what it is, isn't it? It's development, you know. I know a lot of people have been moaning that Ellis Sims has, has been let out on loan while we've got injuries, but it is development. They are they are looking after the player and what he does for Everton in the future. If he does something what do you for... Make a, what do you make of Nathan Broadhead? 24, <laughs> Everton have given... Apparently he's about to sign another new contract, new contract. two years again, which will... Which they're means just essentially that he, they're protecting the protecting asset. The asset he's, not, he's still got a year left. He's, he's, 20, he's not going to play for Everton. Because no, he's, he's going to go on loan to Wigan and next summer he's going to be 25. Sunderland clearly... They wanted him. Sunderland, were they prepared to pay the money for him now? Obviously not. 
And if they're not prepared to pay the money, Everton aren't prepared to let him go. Maybe mm. what they're thinking is if he has a good season at Wigan. In the Champions, a level up again, isn't it, for him? He has a good season. He's not He's he's not got, you know, he's he's not far from his home base. Cook at him, you know what, as well. He cook at him, Wales. Cook. Exactly. Cook and that's why I think maybe they're looking after the player in a way. Because mm. if he'd gone to Sunderland, he would have been competing with Ellis Sims. Mm. And maybe he goes in, he becomes Wigan's first, first, uh, you know, first choice. Mm. And he plays, and then at the end of the season... If he goes to the World Cup, who knows? He gets on the pitch a couple of times. People might, might get, you know, someone might look Grant at him. really likes him under PSV because I think he did really well in Holland because mm. technically he's good. Mm. I just don't think he's not. He's not a Premier League level. And you, if you haven't played regularly in the Premier League when you're nearly 25 or whatever, mm. you're not really going to do it either, I don't think. But good luck to him. Hopefully mm. he goes and has a good season as well because if Everton can get three quarters of a million quid or something for him, in fact, if he gets goals in the Championship, and that might be Kevin Thelwell's thinking, and, and rightly so, is that if he goes to the Championship mm. and scores 10 goals, say, teams then start looking at him going, we'll pay three, four million mm. quid for him. It's 10 goals in the Championship. Hopefully he does it as well, and that's good. That's what we need, isn't it? Uh, Rob Lewandowski on the Super Chat. Thank you very much. Rob says the Blues might actually have a better window than LFC. Let's stay away from that. Mm. It's, a tr- it's a path. That we've trodden. Let's stay away. Um, Richard Beale says, Garassi on the radar. Six foot, six foot five. I think he's six foot two, isn't he? But anyway, he's a big lad. Um, goal scorer. Yeah, he's done all right in France, isn't he? 25. He's not amazing. So, But he would be one who could do what Dominic Calvert-Lewin does. But again... Like we had that chat yesterday mm. to get him and Dominic Calvert Loon in the same side, Everton would have to change the way they play. And would have to go to a, a maybe like a five three two or something. Mm. Um Steepy, it's a good one. Would you take Daniel Jefferson along with another more experienced striker? He's eighteen, six foot five, massive potential, similar qualities to DCL. If we could get him cheap, it'd be good business. I think Everton didn't Everton. We think we tried to get him for about tried three million quid in January. They wanted fifteen million, didn't they? But they wanted and then they sent him on loan to Burton. Yeah, and he, he didn't have a great time at Burton. But he, I've seen him when I rewatched the Watford game. Mm. I had that on, didn't I, last week? Remember what I was saying? I watched it last week, and he was playing. He's 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 a good prospect. Like, mm. I don't know. He's only young. What would he want for him though? But that's the problem. He's in the Championship. Yeah. If they're talking fifteen million pound, you you can't do that. You, Evan can't mm. do that because if you're paying fifteen million, they need a striker that is gonna do the business right now. But it's you know, stay. It's not, it's not a bad one. It, just before I go into the comments, mm. Connor Cody, excellent interview. I thought last night. Mm. And listen, I know words talk is cheap, talk absolutely. Cheap, yeah. But he spoke mm. really, really well, and it was the. Ca- it wasn't for me. It wasn't the standard yeah. um, kind of interview that you get from yeah. a player on day one. No, um, even being honest with you, it sounded like because he was very honest. There's a lot of caffeine involved. Wasn't it? There was a, even being honest with you. He was they very, were very honest, honest weren't he? he? Was very honest all the way through. But I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a fantastic in, as interviews go. Of course, I thought he, he spoke really well, and he didn't. He didn't. Like he shied away from the fact that he's a red. He, he, he kind of took it on the team, you know, when he hinted mm. that he's had a little bit of stick at Goodison and, you know, and he didn't mind that. Mm. And he mentioned his lad loving Everton and being there and all that and his family. There's even rumours that his missus is an Evertonian. Yeah, yeah. So, therefore, I'm I'm delighted with the, the character because it did it did kind of give me the same vibes as Tarkovsky when we spoke to him in America and, and, and when you see him, of like hard working, knows what it is to get the job done. Um, and I guess like the way Seamus has been somewhat of a standard setter and I think if you get standard setters in your squad other people have to pull their socks off because you, you make them look like you get all the knobheads out the squad then don't you basically I mean let's be honest about it he looks like someone who'll come in on day one and just start telling people mm. what they should be doing and that's the way it should be you know none of this bedding in crap get in there straight away and start you know if someone's not doing in training or or whatever um. He's a good player as well. He's a good a good defender. He good. Knows his job. You know, will put his head in front of anything. Um and and uh, it, it, you know, for me on loan it's a, it's 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 just no brainer as no brainers go. Yeah, it's 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 like when this one came up last week, it was just like, well, why on earth would would Wolves give him give him to us? 
that's just mental. I don't understand why they would no. let him go, but clearly they are. Clearly they are. It's a the equivalent of the old fashioned free transfer, you know, in the, back in the day where it was like you know this is a a loyalty thing, and they obviously believe that he deserves his shot at the World Cup, um, and he wouldn't get that at Wolves. So fair fair enough, and I think he'll I think he'll he'll go straight into the team. Certainly now, obviously he'll go straight into the team, and I think. It's just a case of um, getting them in there and, and and just getting to know each other and, and all that kind of thing. But they're good players and they shouldn't they shouldn't be too much of an issue with that. So I, I just think it's a really good sign and for him it suits him. You know, as you mentioned, there's like as lads at Everton, you know, so he's he's used to coming to Finch Farm and all that kind of thing. He doesn't live that far away, really, as the crow flies. So live in the team, you know. So we for for him it's you know for him it's absolutely perfect. I believe. Everton will, you know, straight away. It was just, it was where he wanted to go, mm. you know. Be, you know, and and I, 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 it's a, it's just lit. This one, you couldn't think of a better deal to fall into your lap. And with what happened on Saturday, this is just an absolute dream transfer. Mm. It just makes sense on every level. Um, we just need, we just need a bit of fortune now that they, they stay fit. But yeah, it, so I got a message last night from someone who basically said that about him. <sighs> First one, so Ian. yeah, and so he's delighted with them as well. Yeah. So I think if Everton get those kind of people in to that back, mm. back three, whatever, back five, you've got we saw the enthusiasm, the energy of Nathan Patterson. I think he's going to get yeah. better. I think Michalenko for me is starting to just look like a, a comfortable. The thing about it Everton is though, defender. as well, what these fellas do is. They come in and they talk through people. They coach on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a little interview with Tarkowski after the game. There's someone who was talking about that, saying you're coaching on the pitch. You yeah. are. You're dragging people in. You know, I, I've I've been lucky. I've played with a couple of ex Everton centre backs, mm. and the way they talk to you, the way they're always communicating, the way they're telling you to where to be, <clears throat> making it dead easy for you. Mm. People who've played at the highest level, and I imagine that. That goes on on the pitch, and these two will does, right? these two will do that. You know, if Patterson or Michalenko or even Holgate start drifting or start doing stupid things, they'll be told. Mm. You know, the keeper will be told if he's not on it. You know, the midfielders will be in front of them. Will be told if they're not, if they're getting away from them. You need the, these are the kind. Of, it's mad. I've been talking about these kind of defenders for ages, and now we've just got two in, and that's that's what really pleases me is because you're gonna get that. Then it's that thing there you go. It's the pair of them at twenty five. Well, yeah, but but, but then go look for go a twenty five year old then while you've got yeah. the time. Go and look for a twenty five year old now. Mm. Get a twenty five year old in who will play with them. Maybe you'll make Mason Holgate a better player. You know, you know it's a that's the only shame. Of, that's players. the real pity of not having Ben Godfrey. Is Ben Godfrey yeah. would learn so much and he'd be back. He'd be back and be back after be after back, the World Cup. Yeah, I imagine be boxing day, be playing boxing. You day. know and. Um, or he'd be in the squad, and that's that's what you've got to you've got to have those plays. You've got to have plays that you can look at and go. He'll run through a brick wall for for us today. That we haven't had that enough. Mm. We haven't had that enough. We well, haven't he's had... built his team on that. Didn't exactly. You got to you got to have a fe- you got to have fellas in the dressing so room. You've got, got to have more fellas in the dressing room who think like that than the other way. Yeah. You've got to have those fellas you can turn around to someone who has got a little bit of a, a, a you know a skillful dis- disposition who may not do all the running and go. The other one out, kid. You know you've got to do it. And and to be fair, there's not that many of them at Everton anymore. To no. be who are playing, everyone is working hard. They're getting on the same. We're getting. They're all getting on the you know same page, same page same for that. Yeah. Um, you know, you like so Wolf of Wobbies and Anthony Gordon's people like that. They're all doing that hard work. And then they know fully you flip it and get the other side of it. That start producing that little bit of skill. Yeah. Um, just gotta go get a strike, you know. That's the thing, isn't it? I think if everyone, if everyone had, um. If everyone, if we had mm. Dominic Calvert Lewin fit, and we'd still be in the market for another striker, because mm. we are, I think people would start getting not excited because I think we can't get ahead of ourselves and go, oh, we'll do this and we'll do that. Maybe we just let it play out this season, enjoy the wins when we get them, enjoy when we see a good performance. Mm. And I thought the fans were excellent on Saturday, even at the final whistle. Disappointing, mm. you don't like losing games of football. We haven't, you know, been eleven years since we'd lost on day one and all that. But the fans understood that it was a tight game. It was won by a penalty, and and that was it. You know what I mean? And you could mm. see. I think sometimes, too often over the years, Everton have lost a game of football. But you're watching them and going, "What? What's going on here? What? Like, what's happening?" 
There's no can. And I'm not jumping the gun because it's early, day one. And in three weeks, might be saying exactly the same thing. But on Saturday, I felt like there was there was a plan. I felt like they understood the way they were trying to play. But it was glaringly obvious where where we were short. Yeah. It was it was just like like having a goalie that can't catch anything. And that's the next thing now, isn't it? That's where you can put that's where Everton now can pull put all their efforts now. Got three yeah. weeks. Hopefully it's you can get one in a lot quicker than that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you've got three weeks to get that sorted. Um and that's gotta be the next one. But listen Ghana will take care of itself. You know, it's not something Everton need to be sitting there uh, putting too much energy in as such. The next one is the striker. It's about getting that one through. Yeah. Th- through One or two. And, and Ever- you know what? Even if this fella this fella plays for two years at Everton and then someone like Real Madrid comes in for him because he's flying, mm. then Everton make a big profit on him. I know there's a sell-on as well, so they've got to make sure it's right. That's what you do. And then you recycle that back mm. in and you're looking... If there's a hint where you're thinking he might want to move on here, you start making sure. But Everton, what Everton should really be doing is, if they get Garner in, if that goes through, for the next 12 months, we should be looking going, right, who is like Garner but 21 years of age? <laughs> or whatever, do you know what I mean? Who's showing these same kind of attitudes yeah. where we can bring him in and we can have him with us in the squad and it might be like you said before, then you go, right, let's get him out on loan. Or let's... We've bought him, let's leave him mm. where he is till the end of the season or whatever, and then he comes in forever. And if we do that, then we'll get onto that cycle of we've got the next one coming through and we've got mm. the next Amadou Onana because we clocked him. He's in France and he's playing for Marseille or whoever it is. You know, he's in Belgium playing for Bruges. Mm. We'll get him in, we'll get this fella in. It might be, you know, Tyler on Yango might be the next. Oh, that might be that kind of player that comes in and you go, oh, he's had a great development. Now he's big and strong. He can get around the pitch. He's clever. We'll have him. He's an ever. He's our player. He's you know he's already there. That's what we have to start getting used to. And, and fans, me included, you included, and all that, start getting on board with. Listen, if if we build a team, and every two or three years we have to sell one, but that goes back into mm-hmm. the thing. Then so be it. Until we become a destination, and we might never become a destination club as they call it mm. now, but at least become like the Journey Club, which is all a modern thing. But you know, at least become that way. Like Leicester have been really, but do it better than Leicester. Mm. Leicester have done brilliant. I mean, and I'll have ever won an FA Cup and the bloody league, league title in six years. I don't know how you can do it better, but you know what I mean. Mm. Build it that way. Talking Wesley for Fana for seventy-five million pounds. This is a fella Everton looked at. And we're umming and ahhing over mm. because obviously again the money was tight, mm. and they were going, "Do we or don't we? Do we or don't we?" Leicester took them for whatever it was, twenty-five million, whatever it might have been, a touch more, and have sold them for. Oh, sorry, look like they may well sell them for seventy-five million pound, and then that money will go back in the team, and they'll try to do it again. Now, okay, it might. They seem to have put the brakes on a little bit, Leicester, with some of the stuff they've done, but we do it and build that culture up. Then, as a football club, we will. You, you can't do anything but move forward. Yeah, I'd rather have. I'd rather have really good players for three years, than really bad ones for five or six. Yeah, well, exactly. And you do move you know on, I mean? and then, ple- and then, what happens is then, people do. You get more of the own owners because they look and go, see that club there. That's a good club, brilliant yeah. fans. And if I do well there, this bigger clubs come and, and pay me bigger money, and, and what, everyone's on. What board. What can happen is, is that you can get three or four of these players and suddenly you've got a team yeah. and then suddenly that team does really really well and of course you might do really really well and then the next season everyone wants a bit of it that's mm-hmm. that's that's the natural order that's what you know you look at teams in Europe when mm-hmm. once you know seen it Rangers had a little bit of this summer I think you the Nazi you've had it in the last few years where you've built that really good point and then you see it all fall apart. But what you've got to have, you've got to have the ability to come back. You know, it's about Lille. Lille have done, in the last four or five years, Lille, the talent that's gone through Lille. Mm. And now they've, you know, they won the league title. Don't forget, the year before last, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They, 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 you know, with PSG, you know, they, 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 they go away then and have to start again. Yeah, but... They're not afraid of that because they've already got the way of doing they've things. Done it, yeah. And people are happy to go there because, mm-hmm. like you just said there, it's the first stop on the journey. They know. 
they know. And that's what, what it's all about. Like, and then what hap- what can happen is you become that club, and then people go, oh, I like it. I'll stick around for a couple of years. Haven't I got a boss new stadium and um, fans are great. Fans are great and all, and that, and all yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. And 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 we might stick around a little bit longer, or you know, so look, at, can... look at Lukaku. Lukaku yeah. ended up playing for Everton for four seasons. Mm-hmm. It's the longest he's played for anyone in England. And it's told, oh no, it's a sign for us. There you, you know, and there you go, and he uh, and he'll look back and go, and he and he will say this, I guarantee you. He'll look back and go, my best time playing in England was playing for Everton, because he was, he was a machine when he played for us. He was fantastic. But you get four years out of a lad that put the ball in the net regularly. Now, I'm not confident of Everton signed a striker now. We keep him for four years if he scores goals all the time, because it seems the minute they get on a run now, someone wants to take them, which is fine. But it just proves that you can do it. You know, we bought Ron for 28 million and sold him for 80 in the mm-hmm. end, 75, 80. Now, if Everton had had a succession plan there, mm-hmm. that would be an amazing business. Of course it would have. Amazing and business. And everyone would have gone brilliant. And, and Dom was one. We paid a million quid for him, so he's, and he's in yeah. the team. But if you have had another one to go with Dom, that's, you know, Richarlison paid 34 million for him, mm-hmm. sold him for 60. Okay, not quite the same value, but we've had them for four years. He got mm. double figures every year. We made the profits on them. We move on. Yeah. Keep doing that. Your club very quickly starts to go the other way. Mm. You don't become the old club then. Just spend money and don't go anywhere because that's what we've backed ourselves into a corner over. So hopefully times have changed. DP says, do you think this could be the start of us going after young players? We might finally be starting to change. Would love us to go after someone like Jeremy Doc, who is lightning. He's also very expensive, I think, Steve. But I hope so, Steve. You can never say never, could you? We couldn't really turn around and go, oh, this is definite Everton have changed now. I hope it is. I like the fact that we've done we've done a little bit of twin tracking, which is what we were talking about with players. Um, and I hope it continues. Mm. And we're not saying anything that other people aren't saying either you can see it us as fans know it um, and that, that, we've just got to keep doing it um, okay where are we here crazy toffee says Cavani will be perfect you think Cavani don't you I, I I I mean listen his age of course and obviously um, it'd be interesting to know what his money is like yeah. but I but I honestly think Cavani off the bench, I I I'd rather a million times more than Rondon. He's such a clever player. Mm. He put and I'm not being funny. The way if you're talking about a player in the air, he's probably still the best header of the ball in Europe. No, he's fantastic. By a mile, if you give him the right ball, and, he's fantastic. And I know like people, are like, oh, he's 35. But like I said yesterday, and I remember when we were linked with Thiago Silva, and people were like, look how old he is. Wore slippers on Saturday. He's probably still got those slippers on. Mm. Like. And I know we've brought in a lot of players of a certain age, but and I get that, and it might be once a step too far. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, if he hasn't got a club and we haven't got a centre forward in a few weeks, I would definitely be giving him his age. And I think. Well, what about? I mean, looks like reports today from Spain, Barcelona are about to terminate Memphis Depay's contract. He's going to be a free agent. No. I still think he'll go somewhere. Else. I. I've been doing a bit of work with this, so okay. me and me and one of the me and one of the prem members. Oh yeah, we've we've uh, we've been trying to get Memphis to buy to Everton. Oh right. Okay. okay. Honestly, this is no. This, well, I'm this, not. This, I'm this not, is true. I've I not know. actually. I've just been. You know. You've passing, been. You've been passing been on the messages. I've been pass, passing on the messages. Yeah. Um, uh, he's, he's desperate to get out of uh, get out of. This right. is genuinely a true story. I can't give any more details. This is genuinely a true story, but. With everything going on at Barca, he's been desperate. He's desperate to get out of Barca, or well, he's basically been forced to get out of Barca now. And apparently, he did ask his agent to speak to Everton because of one of our prem members. Um, and who knows him? That's who why. Know, I can't. We can't. I can't no, say any more about it. Him, oh, this so is genuinely. Is. This is genuinely true. This is. I'm not even messing. I'm not even trying to be an ITK. This is a genuinely true story. The lad worked for Barcelona. I can't say any more than that. Mm. He's just left, um, and he, he he basically he said, you know, you you'd be boss for Everton. Mm. You'd be and and apparently his agents tried to speak to Everton. They were like, no, we're not interested. But who knows? Too much money. Who knows? Because well, Everton. But, but apparently, though, he what? Apparently, he wasn't on that much money at Barcelona. Really be, because basically, he just went and cut all his wedge. 
So they've stripped him as a squad number as well now. Took number nine. He's off a him. good player, and he'd yeah. score goals. I think yeah. for Everton. It's the other stuff. No, I know, Memphis, I know, I know, I know. This, that, I know. When you look on, but I was just well, just because Ross has though. said this. World Cup, though. No, I know. No, I'm saying World Cup. You could get him for it if you said someone give you a year contract and then see what happens after the year or, or two years. Twenty seven. That's that's twenty eight. Perfect age. Let's have a look at him. I think he's twenty. But look at look at look, look what's going on at Barcelona. I mean, is supposed to be going, might be going to Chelsea. Yeah. Like they are on their ass. Like twenty eight like, years. Like literally the stuff. The stuff we've all heard, mm. but the st- I, the stuff I, the stuff that I've been told by someone who worked there is ten times worse. Like got twelve goals in twenty eight games last season yeah. in La Liga. Yeah, one in the Europa League in three. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant when he was in, obviously brilliant when he was in France. Um, yeah, Everton tried to get. In fact, Everton thought he did have him when Cuban yeah. was there, and it, it but, didn't quite work, but. Oh, well, we'll see. Terry McAllister says, what's his name? Oh, no. Gary Walters Hardy just done Ross's comment. Chris says, afternoon, fellas. Hopefully we've unearthed the new Patrick Vieira. <laughs> A couple of strikers now, please. And I'd say we'd have an, we've had an impressive window. Uh, Hakon says, oh, Nana and Cody since Live at Five yesterday. The club finally doing business. That makes sense. Mike Barrett says, how long have you had the video recorder for? Oh well. Garrett says Baines must be fuming. Twelve years and no song. Oh Nana had about five mm-hmm. before he even signed. <laughs> to be fair to him, I'm do Oh Nana. It's a boss name for coming up to songs with. <coughs> Mike Barrett says Cody can't half talk, can he? <laughs> Derek says over the moon to finally get this complete shaping up like a good window. Also, I really uh, think the signing of Connor. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> Cody is a great piece of business. Mm-hmm. KSI says uh, credit where it's due to the scouting team. Now a striker is a must. To make it a great window, find it all a bit mad when we haven't moved on all the dead would you? But you can, can you? Started watching the high performance podcast. Oh yeah, the, the second one he done with Lampard at Finch Farm. Yeah, and in the first twenty minutes, he, he touches on. I haven't watched it all, so I know there's a lot of good stuff still to come. But he touches on wanting to get people out, and it's just not that easy. Because it isn't. It's it's fine going. We just need to get rid of him, him and him. Those players are on contracts. Mm. They don't fancy it. So go, then what can you do? Um, Ruse says, hey, fellas, great sign and bringing in Onana. I'm pleasantly surprised with the players we've brought in thus far. To think we were linked with Winks, Gilmore and Barkley and end up with all these players instead is very promising. If we can secure a decent striker, which will be tough, it'll almost be a perfect window. Just want to know as well, do Wolves have the ability to call back Cody? You, no. Ne- no one ever has the ability to call back anyone once they go on loan. Loans now are like contract are like separate contracts, like a year contract. Because money changes hands. Money and changes all hands. They're like it's like a mini transfer, isn't it, within your contract? So there's no there's none of that anymore. The only thing the only ones that may have those ones in are some of the younger ki- kids mm. kids now. But that just just doesn't happen anymore. Graham says, I lads, after where we finished last season and the signings made so far, as the song goes, the only way is up. Uh, Jonathan says, is it true we have bid for two strikers, Stuttgart one and the Rens one? Can't remember the names. Kaladic and Ren is a uh, Garassi. I uh, don't know, Jonathan. Don't know. There's certainly inquiries gone in for, for three or four. So we'll see what happens. They obviously, I think, Rozier is the one, if in a perfect world, he's the one he wants. Whether that's right or wrong, people agree or don't, that's the one he wants. Ralph says, all right, lads, we've got some tall players now, might get a few goals from set pieces. Uh, is that the defence and midfield sorted, or do we need more? I think we need a, we need a bit of creativity, whether you, whether you want to call that midfield, I don't know, but it's not happening, though, we it? need a bit of creativity. Lozen just says, great addition. Looks like we finally have a plan with the recruitment. Bobby says, KT and FL thanked Bill Kenley for his involvement in transfer negotiations. Maybe the chairman is doing something right. Well, the chairman does the negotiating. Whether people like that or not, That's I think that's just a fact. He's mm-hmm. experienced. He still does it at the moment. Kevin Thelwell builds the deal, builds the stuff around it, and then the chairman sorts the money out. I, I, I don't know whether that's right, wrong, and different, but that's what happens um, right now. When that'll change, I don't know, but that's that's what happens. Uh, Gary Ward says this is shaping up to be a pretty good window. Chris says Agent Rom, Andy Campbell 
happy days. Daniel says, how much do you think Cade Calder cost? It would make sense from a commercial aspect and squad improvement. Mm. I don't know. He's young and he's, he's someone of Everton should definitely keep their eye on for me. Forward, he's quick, yeah. he's big. He's only he 18. Is a, he is definitely getting them before they go Oh, big. without a shadow. So because he's American, I'm not sure how it would work, but people who are more qualified than me will tell you exactly what how. work permits work permits I don't know how work stuff. permits work anymore do. because we've took all our work we've, the country's took the work permits back yeah um, and I they see someone told me it was easier it was now easier, than yeah, it's easier but now I just don't it know. Is e- the reason why it's easier now is is because obviously if you're from the in the old way it was in the old days you're mm. from the EU you were guaranteed to work here. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what that what that meant was less people from outside the EU could work here. Mm. But now the EU, You're seats all are, everyone's that, all yeah. in together. So actually, it's probably like anyone could get a job here now. Mm. Basically, well, I mean, we're crying out for people to go to, to work here. Now. Every, yeah. Everything we work. So I think it's actually easier now. I think to just go. Pfft. In mm. fact, I don't even know if there's a fellow to do the rubber stamp anymore. There doesn't see, we don't seem to have a government. So the, yeah. all those people have disappeared. So they're all in all, you were Boris apparently, but. Um, Fair play to him. You know what I mean? I mean, not fair play. <laughs> Absolutely anything but fair play to him. <laughs> uh, retract, retract. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, Gareth says, Baz must be overjoyed after the disappointment of Bailey and Sangari. One of the players, Baz, was convinced would be a good addition way before any links has arrived. I am. And then obviously the pressure comes. And I don't know if he's not very good, but I think he's got the tools to be good. I've mentioned him for a while. I think he's got the tools to be a good player. For Everton, I think he's got the tools to exist and do well in the Premier League. Um, so hopefully he becomes a boss player for us and he improves our team massively. Uh, Steve Guy says, really tough with the signings so far, but we must get two strikers in before the window shuts or it'll have been for nothing. I don't see us getting two strikers in. I see us getting one, but two, I, I, I don't see it right now. But listen, it could happen. Hugh says uh, Cody is a very smart move. Getting two centre backs injured and getting a replacement by Monday is very un Everton like. Mm. To be fair to Everton, he was always getting them over the weekend, weren't they? But it looks good and that's good. Uh, Steve also says on a separate note, I came over early for the game on Saturday and took the ferry so I could see Bramley Moore dock from the water. It's going to be awesome. I'd recommend that boat ride to everyone. It gives the build a whole new perspective. It's looking fantastic now, isn't it? Gare says, oh, Nana, such an exciting signing. We have had plenty of false dawns in the past, but this lad has everything in his locker to be a success and the lore of a World Cup to focus his mind, doing it straight away. The signings so far make me feel very differently about the season. If we can find an oh, Nana level striker, uh, then I think we can surprise a few people. Uh, Gaz says, great two signings, and yet the social media trolls are off again with their typical Everton we need a striker, not a centre half and a midfielder. Incorrect. We need all three. Now two are sorted. We can put all our resources into the striker. I swear, if we signed Mbappe, some Blues would moan. Possibly. Danny says wasn't massive on Cody signing, but his interview sold me. Great character. What about Onana's English? It's better than mine. Seems another great character in Frank and Kevin. We trust. Further to that, Machiri finally learning his lesson and taking a step back. Listen, if Machiri steps back and lets people do their job and comes up with ways to support the the process financially, then Everton will move forward quicker than people expect. If he keeps dipping in and sticking his head in and all that, then the club won't ever move forward under his stewardship. So hopefully for him, he's listened and people have gone, you know, if you actually just... You know, stick to what you know and let everybody else do their job. Then we might actually make you some money, and we might actually. He has gone very quiet recently. It's and, good, and I can only applaud that. Yeah, it's good. Let the people do the work. Then you've got accountability. If you keep dipping in and go, no, do it this way, and it fails, who's accountable? Mm. It's him. So step away from it and just let them get on with it. And then we know if all these signings are rubbish, you can go. Evans recruitment seems rubbish mm. because. These, they bought these players and it's not work. If he keeps going, oh, we are. El Ghazi's cousins here, take him for, you know, then. El Cousiny. El Cousiny, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Owen says, look at the pie's numbers, no way. 
No way we wouldn't want him, but unfortunately... No, sorry, there's no way we wouldn't want him. Sorry, Owen, I thought you were saying sorry, you don't want him, but unfortunately can't see it happening. No, I can't, I'm not saying no, it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. But he would be... A, I think he'd be... What would be good about Memphis Depay is he can play anywhere across the front three. So when Dom came back, Everton could play three, and his output is but goals. He, but let's just... It, as the window drags on, and as the Barcelona situation gets more and more complicated let's just say mm. and and as he wants to play in the World Cup or he I mean he's going to the World Cup and he needs to play football yeah 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 then, yeah. then it becomes he, a, he, becomes he will rock up somewhere where yeah, people yeah. go wow how well, did they get him like he will and go to Forest or something yeah but you wouldn't be but you wouldn't be surprised if he like if you know someone I don't know if you know someone got hold of him if Leicester sold someone and he ended up at Leicester or whatever I don't know yeah yeah but because he will he will have to go somewhere and he ain't going to one of the big teams is he? I, I would imagine. Maybe he will could rock up. He could still Chelsea could should. rock up at Chelsea. Really, well. Chelsea should but take him. Point being is, someone like him will become available. And are Everton in the position? Well, maybe, maybe we're not this summer. But who's to say that? You know, he will go somewhere, and people will go. That's a really good signing mm, for them. Smart, yeah. So probably won't be us, but you know. Yeah. Um, Nathan says, uh, speaking of Barca with Memphis, how the Oh, have they now stumped up cash for Bernardo Silva? Eighty million, apparently. They're not. They're, they're not getting. I can't see them getting Bernardo Silva. Not I, this. It's summer. not that. It's not that they couldn't. It's just eighty million euros. They seem to be signing people and then dealing with the consequences afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got. They've been caught yesterday, apparently, according to the Spanish media, of setting up a, a, a dummy company to run them to to inflate their media um, this media thing that they've got going and they've been caught and apparently the the Liga are saying that's not real and also you've got to pay the tax on it or something so it's oh, actually okay. backfired on them and they're actually going to have to pay more money so they've got loads of players that they're not allowed to register um, the Liga said last week that their their, their uh, wage structure was it was supposed to go down it's actually gone up it's gone up yeah seen that they can't get rid of people. People like De Jong has been told his contract is fraudulent. I mean, you not heard this story? I've stayed so, with so De Jong's contract. Barcelona. They all want big money. That, that. De Jong. Barcelona saying to De Jong now that the contract that was given to him in 2020 was given is actually fraudulent and was given to to him by the last regime of Barcelona and it's actually um, criminally, uh, you know, inept or something or whatever. And basically, they can't. The, they saying that contract is worth nothing. You're gonna to have to go back to your old contract. So, f- so we don't owe you actually any money because that contract we're just gonna write a line because it's we can prove that it's a fraudulent contract. So you've, they've got that on the toes. They've got players like Memphis and a, and a few others they're trying to get rid of. They're having to give players away for nothing. The, the Bournemouth got Neto, the goalie for nothing. They've got massive problems, yeah, and yet yeah. they continue to keep trying to buy players and deal with the consequences later. Like you yeah. mentioned yesterday, who was it you were saying about um, were he worried about get were he ever going to get paid for someone? Who was he? Can't remember. Who have they bought this summer? Well, there was Levin, oh, but, Leeds. Oh, Leeds. Rafinha. Leeds with Rafinha. And they were yeah, like, sorry, Leeds yeah. are like, we'll find out we'll on find the 2nd of, Jan- uh, yeah, of yeah, yeah, September yeah. whether we're going to get paid or not. Mm. It's like, That's they crazy. are, they That's are, they are, by the way, in dire straits, mm. Barca, and they keep on painting it, painting it over by signing more players. Bernardo Silva would be mental. I'm saying, I'm telling you, this city would be mental to sell him because he's still a boss player, mm. and I wouldn't even dare sell him till at no. least next summer. Until you've prepared for it. Jane says Joel Robles just signed for Leeds, Leeds on a free. Yeah. Good signing. Thirty-two. Um, Sam says, in my personal opinion, if he could get the pie and bros, you're a striker. That'd be amazing. Yeah, it would be amazing. Uh, Enrico says only twenty-five percent of their TV like they've sold at the moment. Um. Ian McDonald says, seriously, Frank sacked or leave first. It knocked out his ear. Um, and now he... Crazy Toffee says, John, don't listen to rival clubs. Lad O'Nan is a crazy talent. Yeah, he is. Um, Why are you saying he's not? I don't West know. Ham Someone fans? in... West the, I, I can't be bothered going back trying to find it, to probably be West, honest. Probably West Ham fans. Yeah. Well, they'd be devastated. Yeah, of course they would. Be devastated. Yeah. They had a top player. Did you see? Um, been them. 
on Sunday to see Rodri just was it was it Rice who comes sliding in and Rodri just sidestepped yeah, just went just, them, yeah. just went what a player by the way you'd think he'd have more caps for Wales though wouldn't you Rodri yeah the name yeah, good player <laughs> Good Welsh player. He's unbelievable. No, he, he is. is unbelievable. I just couldn't believe how big his shoulders oh, were when he comes huge, to Goodison. He's huge. Unbelievable. Uh, Daniel says, do you think we should not... So, do you think we should sell Delhi before we have to pay for him? If we end up paying 10 to 20 million and he continues to disappoint, we could have spent that elsewhere. I'm guessing we've put money aside for when that happens, but we could use it if he left. Where would he go? Who's paying? Hmm. For Delhi at the an, moment. It's an enigma though, isn't it? Mm. So, that 10 is million that. after 20 games of Everton. Are they, I wonder, if, is that 20 games including substitutes or, or yeah, starts? Really starts the appearances. 10 yeah. million after. So. Danny says, think Tosh will bring him Brozier on at the weekend. Was a bit of a two fingers up to Everton. Move on. Um, Brozier will be cheaper next window because I don't think he'll play for Chelsea much this season. But we need them now. And I expect them to spend stupid money on a couple of forwards. But we and need them Brad now. says, with the report that we've satisfied Premier League over profit and sustainability, how much is left in the transfer kitty? I don't know, Brad. Is the answer to that? They don't, they don't tell us um, how much they've got to spend. And, and quite rightly, they shouldn't be telling anybody. No. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, they can bring a strike. They know what they need. They know what they need. Um Uh, Anfield Red says I'm not convinced with Gerard. Fair enough. Um, Minari Tussle needs a slap. Says Brain Rat. It's a little bit harsh. Interesting. It? It's a little bit harsh. Like the final one, Craig <coughs> Stokes says, What's your view on Alan? Doesn't seem to be in Lampard's plans, but I think he's quality and has a lot to give us. He's been he's, he's coming back from an injury. I don't I don't I, right now I I imagine he's within the plans of the squad. Evertonians, right? Or, and, and I have no issue saying this, are fixated on starting 11s. It's like we've been conditioned for 30 years because well, we, have, because we, we haven't had like squads. No, I know. Place, it's like we why. are conditioned to not be able to look past the starting 11, and yet we're the club that gets more injuries than anybody else. Yeah. We're the club that needs a, a bigger squad than anybody, and yet our, our fans are fixated on starting 11s. I'm not being funny, right? You can... You can happily not start the first 10 games of the season and still end up playing a very decent amount of games in the season. End up could play. You, you've, like, footballers games, know that. Yeah. Footballers go to work five days a week before they play a game. Mm. You know, they're all in it together. They don't just sit there and go, well, I'm not in the team today. What am I going to do? Or someone's been bought on my position. They go out there and if they've got the right attitude, they fight every day in training. Alan's been injured. He's been coming back and the club have not rushed him back. They've gone, well, you're th over 30. You'd have had operation and we'll just bring you back slowly because that's the what that's what we, the physios are telling us to do because actually we don't want to rupture anything or do anything, you know, because Everton, <laughs> Everton you know, have been light in midfield so Everton, have, Everton fans have got to get out of this thing of well, out where does he get in the team it's like it doesn't You, it's the squad you need you need two play, you can bring five subs on now hmm. Chel, every one of Chelsea subs would get in our starting team yeah. every single one of them and that's the way you've got to think you need at least two players for every position and that's just for the Premier League those teams who are in the Champions League need more and I get hmm. that Um and that's why I actually think the sub, the, the five sub things, two of them should have been under twenty ones, because I don't, I just don't think it's fair that clubs who play in the Champions League, and I've got all that talent, should be able to just bring all that money back and go, well, we're buying you, 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 and you. Mm. But anyway, that's the second one. But we've got to get out this idea. We need, we need twenty three, twenty four quality players in our squad. That that that's no, for the, that's, right. that's for the Premier League. Right. Otherwise, you find yourself in a position like last season. No one is ever, ever, ever going to be able to play with 11 players for the entire season. It's just, just facts. Mm. It's just not going to happen. Suspensions, injuries, yeah. whatever it is, players being pulled out the team because they're on the red line. Mm. You know, all these things have to be factored in. Internationals, if they're good players, you've got to factor all these things in and it's it's time we stop thinking like that. Listen, there will be players who will be bombed out that the manager will go, you don't actually fit 
the way we play anymore. Mm. So therefore, I want to get rid of you and replace you with a player who does fit the way we play. Yeah. But we've got to get away from this I, starting eleven. I thing. kind of agree with you, but I still think if Everton got an offer for Alan, he'd tell him. I actually believe that. I really do. No, right in this winter, you wouldn't though, because we haven't got, we haven't got it. Uh, we haven't got. If Garner Garner comes in, I we think haven't Evan got Garner. Uh, <coughs> Kevin Kraft says, "Well, Shedpad, uh, we're building a squad. All the same, we need two players for every position." Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm saying a lot of people obviously asking, rightly so, where are the goals in this squad? But we know that, and the, that's the, that's the next thing, isn't it? Mm. And Daniel O'Connor says, "You think Pulisic will be happy being a bench warmer at Chelsea?" But he's not. <laughs> But he's not a bench former. He will play lots of games this season. They are in every competition. That's not. He's how... only got a year left on his contract, apparently. He will play a lot of games this season. And Rue says, final one in relation to last night's chat: the shell and beer in Australia for twelve dollars in paper cups. There you go. We need to up the six quid for Carling. Mm. Right. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back obviously on Premier at five o'clock. Have a good day. Hit the like button. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye.